Why are you happy right now? It's been so long since I'm able to put gas on. So we're at the gas station, like any good Jeep day starts out and basically we're in the JKU. Marlon is super stoked because it's been several years that he's only been able to like pump, I don't know, like $2 at a time, something with the EVAP canister, something with like the fuel line situation. So he completely removed the EVAP canister and for the first time ever, he's able to pump gas without the the thing clicking on and off so obviously we're putting it back on we're getting that all fixed we're actually on our way to tom's right now what's up guys welcome back to another video i'm sorry we disappeared off the face of the earth but so many changes have happened in the last couple months it's been crazy so come with us today on this adventure we are home currently chattanooga tennessee we're going to be running around doing some errands going to explain to you guys what's been going on we're in our jku which a lot of you probably haven't seen so let's get to it first stop gas station marlon and i need desperately some red bull time to power up yep when was the last time the gauge in this jeep red full uh, it's been years years like three years huh so for everyone that in the comments is gonna let us know that we were silly uh, because we didn't fix the problem for so long. So Marlon's had this Jeep since 2016. He bought it brand new off the lot. And um, that's neither here nor there, but we have three Jeeps um, and we live a very hectic life. So yeah, I totally escaped him to fix because I definitely don't do it. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things you put on the back burner. We use the two door and the JL a lot more than this vehicle, this Jeep, but you're gonna be seeing this one a lot more this year, guys. We're super excited to bring back the infamous, famous four door JK back to the Off-Road and Chill channel. We're gonna do a walk around in a bit, show you everything that's coming off um, to a local Facebook marketplace. <laughs> <laughs> close to you so stay tuned for that guys our home away from home so quick stop here at Tom's 4x4. As y'all know, they build all our Jeeps and work on our truck as well. Um, they have this sexy, sexy thing behind me here, but I'm gonna try to get a couple updates on my Jeep, see what's going on, what's uh, where we are progress, progress wise, and see when I could get my Jeep back. Let's do this. I'm doing it guys. Uh, I'm doing it because we had a poll first, I'm on the fence. I'm 50-50 about it because I love the original JK uh, grill, but I really do like this. It's going to give it like a facelift. Um, most of you guys have told me to go ahead and do it, so we are um, taking this bad boy home. We're not home. We're going to drop it off at the paint shop, get a quote, just kind of get it done. I'm going to color match the uh, gloss black, I guess, of my Jeep. So looking forward to seeing the entire thing put together, so yay! So it, this is definitely not a new concept, guys. Uh, I do have a JK, it's going on a JK. This is a JK to JL conversion grill. So these um, headlight holes, I should call them, those are gonna be seven inches. So that's the JK one versus a JL one is nine, but you'll see it's made to mimic the JL style, but you'll see that it'll still have this. This is very JK. Again, we talked about the sizing here, but it's just a, a conversion grill, so nothing too, too crazy. I think it's about 300 bucks online. So super simple, cheap, and a quick exterior modification. Adds uh, no horsepower though, unfortunately, but it'll have bigger holes here for more airflow. Marlon likes to come by almost every single day, if not every day, every other day to take a look at his baby. So this is what's gonna be going into the JL. Sometime this year, we went ahead and purchased the transmission that comes out of a track hawk. I think we got that in Illinois. So we do have to pick that up or our friend's gonna go ahead and bring it to EJS and meet up with us um, next month. So that'll be cool. So slowly but surely getting all the parts to fit this beast. So heading back to the furthest lift in the back to see the update on my Jeep. It's kind of been in the air for a couple weeks. We are waiting on, I believe, trusses. So front and rear, rear we need the trusses for um, the Ultimate Dana 60s. Um, that's kind of been the whole holdup on the project. Haven't really been able to do anymore because without the trusses, they're not able to do mock-ups at full bump and stuff like that. 
um, to make sure they know where to cut the corners because those are blank. So let's flip this camera around and show you guys what I'm looking for. Oh, GP. GP's in pieces. So this is the rear axle, I believe. So that's all shaved and prepped ready for, or cleaned up, I should say, ready for the trusses. So the engine is in, guys, a beautiful 6.4 liter, so AKA a 392. We have the new oil pan. Um, well, so see, uh, where's the first? Okay, so what do you think, Tyler? Oh, uh, I think it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be a whole new Jeep for you. So what do we have, like, you know, obviously I know we're waiting on the trusses, but what comes after this? Or what's been done up until this point, basically? Okay, so basically we stripped all the factory suspension out. Uh, so the front cool buckets, shock mounts, all of the control arm mounts were removed for the uppers and the lowers. Um, we moved the steering box forward uh, about two inches. So that's all been relocated. And then what that's gonna allow us to do is also push the front end out about three and a half to four inches. Um, so it gives us more clearance there. Engine, 6.4 Hemi's installed, uh, bolt-in motor mounts. We changed the bell housing on your factory transmission to a Hemi-style bell housing. And then, uh, so this is your factory transmission, but then we added an outlet transfer case to it. Three to one, uh, got all the cable shifters installed. So everything's done from there to here <laughs> and then uh, this is the rpm steering and suspension uh three link cross member so your lower links actually go into it and then the upper link is right here uh for the three link and then on the rear it'll be a double triangulated four link kit also from rpm so this is the lower cross member it actually requires you to remove one of the factory cross members that runs above through here so you take it out put this one in its place and then you've got uh, your rear upper links also. So we still got some cleaning to do. Somebody likes to, liked to play in mud down in Florida. Not me. I don't know who that <laughs> would have been. But uh, we need to all that out. And um, so the next step is once the trusses get here, I think they're supposed to be here tomorrow finally. We've been waiting on them for what seems like forever. Yeah, a month. Uh, so we're going to put the rear truss on. And then uh, we have the links. So we'll get them installed and then basically determine where the coilovers need to be. So we have the towers here and this, this is kind of a builder kit. Um, and so these are the rear towers here. And as you see, they're like three feet long. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have to cut them to length and uh, place the coilovers, but we're going to have to cut into the body to fit them in and, um, once that's done, we'll go about placing the fuel cell on the back of the Jeep and replumbing it and making all the fuel lines. That's right, fuel cell, because that the regular, the stock tank went over there. Yeah, so the stock tank was, basically, that's why this mud's here, because the, the factory tank is against the frame, and so it fits up against the bottom of the body and ran down this side up to the cross member. And so the problem is when you go to the double triangulated four link, your upper link and your lower link and your cross member are all in the way, and they don't. Uh, feel anymore, so. All right, sounds good. So you got your work cut out for you. Yeah. Come yeah. on, GP, you can do it. So. Okay, go. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six. Your face is red. Se no, all the way. Se <laughs> oh. So just dropped the uh, the grill off at our local one of the many. So Chattanooga is very industrial, has tons and tons of just uh, paint shops, auto body collision area. So we dropped it off at one of our favorites who actually painted the aftermarket hood on the two door. And he says that the clear, their clear coat has gone up, has doubled in price. He says it's ridiculous. He hasn't seen anything like it. So really what I was expecting the price of the grill to be painted, it's actually doubled that. I would have thought it was 150, but it's actually $300 just to get it um, to color match and then with the gloss over it. So that's a little crazy, but we did drop it off. He has tons and tons of work to do. So he said he's just gonna call me when it's done, but it's probably gonna take a couple weeks. Only in Tennessee, or not really, but I'm sure y'all have seen something like this in your city. It's not strapped down. So we're home. Marlon is tinkering inside the JKU. The JKU for 2023 is going to be completely different. I'm going to go into the details on what exactly we're changing. 
um, on, I think, sometime this week, if not tomorrow, the day after. So stay tuned for that. So we got through today, guys. Thank you for joining us on our errands and just covering a couple things. In the next video, I wanna go over what we're changing on our JKU, what's gonna be different for 2023, and also where we are going to be for 2023. So stay tuned for that. We have a bunch of events, a bunch of different places that we haven't been to before that we're going to this year, and we can't wait to see you guys then. Bye. Bye, take care.